Here we go. Cool. Okay. Uh, Follow the Beavers, episode 20. Ta -ta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we were just talking about how um, we're in the Elf Wanderer. Uh, has uh, made her way into a um, the, the camp of some kind of gang, uh, and um, the leader of that gang, whose name is Varpu, uh, emerged from a cave and said, "Who is this?" This is Pippin, otherwise known as Varpu. <laughs> that's Pippin. Your wait, that's Pippin. Your cat. Nice. And there she is. Okay, so let me think here. So we're talking, um, you guys camped, and then set we right now on this scouting mission. So I'm going to say it's like, um, it's probably late morning, close, close to midday. Um, it's a bright, sunny day. Um, <clears throat> a few clouds in the sky, bright blue sky, uh, and uh, so you're on this rocky highland terrain right back at the mouth of the Cave of the Beast, um, and these this, this group of people has clearly been living here for a little while. You know, there's signs of their habitation, at least around the outside of the cave, and um, this woman, Varpu, emerges and asks... <clears throat> You know why? Why is she being called forth? And the guy who you ran into um, uh, says who you are, which is everybody knows the story of the heroes of Rayuna and how one of them um, was an elf. And uh, you've already sort of said that that's who you are. Um, and the guy's taking it at face value. And Varpu says to you, "So there's like a." There's a fire pit outside, they're roasting some meat on it. The guy that you ran into was bringing back some, um, uh, a catch of his own. Um, all eyes are kind of on this exchange as, um, you know, Barpy who's like big and tan and um, clearly been living out in the wild for a while. Um, you know, matted, unwashed hair. Uh, uh, you know, very kind of gruff, no nonsense kind of um, vibe. And Varpu asks you, Mwirin, um, <clears throat> why have you come back? Um, ooh, okay. <laughs> I will, um, Try to, um, I guess, so my, I guess my approach is <laughs> generally to be for, frankly honest, but more in, if, with, with more of the intention of um, trying to suss out her, like, leanings. I don't know either like who she's loyal to or what she stands for. So, so anyway. Like, do you want to like, like have a conversation to that end? Um, do you want to like have a conversation not to that end, but kind of use your kind of powers of observation and deduction to try to see what you can figure out about her? Like, or some kind um, of those things? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, maybe a combination of like observation and conversation. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I mean, I can say more or less something true, which is that, um, we've been adventuring, or I, I've been adventuring as I typically do. <laughs> Um, and, you know, no one, no one, um, I have no ties to my, to any one place. And so I come and go as I please. 
Huh. Yeah, that's the way of all elves, isn't it? <laughs> what about your, um, your human friends? What about the Metza that you are? One of them was Corkeen, right? What do you know about them? What do I know about them? Mm-hmm. Anybody remember their names? And somebody says, uh, Paiviki! Paiviki was one! Um, and then somebody else says, Taimi! And Taimi had a friend, uh, Anika! And Tapias! Tapias from Rayona went! The boy! Is the boy alive? Um, and you spent a little bit of time, Rayona, you realize that a couple of these people are Rayunin. Right, yeah, so, yeah, that's what I was thinking, that they must have passed through. So, uh, can I, like, look at some of them and say, like, I recognize you, um, so that you still speak fondly of us, so I'm glad to hear. <laughs> Ah, um, Varpu says, um, they say that you, uh, went south to help the little people with something. But, uh, looked to me like you ran away. Right when things were getting hard. Um, uh, I'd like to ask, was she there before we left? No, I wasn't there. I came... I, I've never set foot in your village, in that village. I've been out here, wandering the highlands. Gathering what you mm -hmm. see in front of you. Um, I've, just heard, I've just heard the stories, though. The stories that you killed the beast, came back, and then left again. You must have found, uh, you must have found a um, fair amount of treasure in, in this cave because there was still, still some left when we got here. Oh, so you checked out the caves. Oh, yes. Well, this is, um, this is our new home. Oh. Oh, interesting. Well, I do apologize for coming to your new home unannounced. Um, ah, how could you know we were here? <laughs> uh, and you, are, you, you are announced. Tommy announced you. Well, I, um, I truly, I, I bring no feelings of. Uh, hostility or um, intention of uh, uh, malice. Um, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I suppose we're just two <laughs> wanderers encountering a uh, meeting for the first time. Um, are you are you in touch with uh, Rayuna in any way, or um, do you only stay at this cave? We, we get supplies um, from time to time, but we're based here. And you seem uh, pretty critical of us leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh... Well, it seems to me that you were strong. This uh, woman, this uh, Paiviki, that they say um, was in charge. Uh, I understand that some of you stood up to the word giver. But then you left. Um, that's all I know. And now you've come back. I wonder why. Well... The group I travel with still calls Rayuna home, and uh, there's a pause. There's somebody. There's a there's a call from inside the cave. Somebody says, 
can I have a hand here? And um, uh, Varku looks over at uh, a woman sitting by the um, by the fire, and the woman um, gets up and goes over and um, goes inside and helps somebody haul out. Um, there's a big um, burlap. It's not like a sack. It's just like a a kind of le- like a piece of burlap that's been cinched up into a sack um, uh, and helps them haul it out of the mouth of the cave. Um, and um, they kind of dump it near the fire pit and um, it's um, a big pile of books. Um, would you recognize from being inside the, that little library that the sorcerer had down there? Mm-hmm. Um, you guys took some of the books, <clears throat> but that you left behind a bunch of stuff that didn't wasn't of immediate interest. And so um, they've just hauled up this big uh, big load of books from inside the cave and sort of dumped that by the fire. You were saying? Um. And as, you're, as, you, as, as she looks at you, she reaches down and she picks up a big, like a big leather bound uh, tome with one hand. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess I'll confide that we were here to see what was left in the cave briefly. Um, <clears throat> but have you, if you've explored everything and taken all that in there, um, what have you found anything of interest? Hmm. Well, we found this garbage. And she takes this book that she's holding and she <laughs> rips it down the spine and throws both pieces into the fire. Oh. <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> Unless it was one of those flying books. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys killed the flying books. Oh, all of them? I'm pretty sure. At least the ones that were attacked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. The ones that were animated that day. As far as you know. (laughs) Yon, is there a flying book in the room right now? (laughs) Yeah, I'm about to catch it. (laughs) Oh. Well, uh, well, uh, forgive me for all the questions. I'm just fascinated to see you here. And, uh, you know, if if Rayun is in trouble, we would we would never um, let harm fall to that village. Um, we, um, you know, feel responsible for those people. And if you <clears throat> consider yourself part of that village, for some of you, um, we would count you in. Uh, Wait, say the last, say the last part again. For your oh, if you f- if you or your some of your people feel like you are part of Rayuna, um, we would consider you part of our group or one of someone we are like, loyal to like as well. Kin, I see. Like your yeah, yeah, kin. Um, so she looks around the group of people and she says, "So, any of you, the 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 returned, the returned." Uh, Say that you're welcome among their among their number. Would you go? I know that I know that Marie was not proposing this, but this is how Varpu interprets what you're saying. Um, would you go, or you, would you stay with Varpu? And she pounds her chest. Um, and one or two of them just kind of look at each other, but everybody goes Varpu and pounds her chest. Would you stay with me and break words? And she picks up another book and goes. And throws it into the fire. Um, and uh, you know, I yes, yes, around the around the around the group. And then she says to you, "I don't care much for the villagers of Rayona. They mean nothing to me. But the word keepers and those who own them must die." This cave is ours now. Everything that was here that you left behind is ours. There were some supplies. There was all that silver that you left embedded in the floor. 
that's ours now. These books will keep us warm for a few nights. Uh, and then she says, uh, in, and clear. <laughs> <laughs> she says sarcastically, welcome back. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> if there's nothing for that our group can offer you, then I suppose we'll leave you in peace. Um, and so I'm going to turn around to leave. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so she's just going to let you go. You, you hear there's some, like, murmuring behind you as you leave. People, like, you know, got whispering about um, the fact that you came and um, the fact that they, the heroes may be coming back, that kind of thing. And then you leave. And then you make your way back to the group. Cool. Is that your next move to return to the gang? Oh yes, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then I'll share with them that what we saw and that my opinion is that the cave belongs to that group for <laughs> now. So um, we either leave them as they are or um, parlay with them again. I didn't do a good job, honestly. I don't think they wanted our help. <laughs> but maybe, maybe they'll want to work together if Rayuna is in any kind of sorry shape. I can't believe they're burning those books. <laughs> they break words, apparently. Yeah. I wonder if they could be allies. Agreed. It, it um, seems as though we have a common enemy. Yeah, Taimi nods vigorously. If they hate word keepers and word givers half as much as what you say, then I think they would be powerful allies to have to loosen the Colkeen's grip on Rayuna. Well, I'll tell you what the most uh, my main takeaway is that they, they have heard legendary tales of who we are. They know especially of Paibiki the Great. They know of Taimi the Hunter. They even know of Hanukkah and Topias. Um, so they shouldn't, yeah, they shouldn't bother yeah. us. Um, uh, yeah, Taimi's uh, puffing out her her, her chest um, uh, at the thought of being part of any sort of renown. Um, well, they're uh, uh, and right. They should hold those stories dear while they warm themselves and uh, get. Uh, derive comfort from the spoils of our battles. <laughs> I wonder what brings them out to live in this cave. Varpu clearly distrusts the Korkin. Um, but I wonder what they do, uh, what they're after. Are they robbers? Do we really want well, to have with them? You know, they seemed like honest people, loyal to their leader, who could share a common goal with us. Um, but what is so, their, what are they doing here? Are they simply living or are they? Um, are they, uh, 
feeding off of other people's misfortune. I don't know. Hmm. If their self-appointed uh, aim is to get rid of word keepers and word givers, uh, there's not much in the area for them to work with. So they're either building up strength or they're just giving excuses. Hmm. Flying under a banner of valiance and, and honor when really they're just thieves hiding out in someone else's cave. Building up strength or, um, or hiding, you're saying? Yeah. Who knows? Did, well, this, did this Varpu character tell you about any of their exploits? How long has she been in operation? Oh, believe me, I, I, I wanted to, to ask all of those questions. Should we go and have dinner with them? How do we get invited? Uh, I, think I we told would, them we would leave them alone. I think we would just walk up and offer them some lobster meat. <laughs> yes, I think we must uh, offer them. We have to offer them something. My only fear is that um, if they are indeed bandits, that um, they'll decide to try to mess with us. Um. Uh, uh, and I won't pay uh, anybody until they've rendered a service to us, uh, just allowing us to walk near their campfire won't earn uh, anything from me. What do we have to give them, though? We have four honeymead urns. Oh. Is everything from the recent haul in the kitty? I, I don't. I think we might still be holding stuff. I have fur still. Yeah, I think we all have. We're all carrying furs, and then there's like a bunch of little trinkets and gems and stuff that are yeah uh, in the in the cart. I th I think we went. Unfortunately, I think Jason walked through the list and then. <laughs> Since we weren't by the cart, we didn't put it in the cart. We were just acknowledged that like a lot of it was weight zero, but we can do that later. Yeah, well, right. if you want to know what you had to bargain with, I can tell you. Um, yeah, that might not be a bad idea. Yeah. Um, I wasn't thinking to give them anything, but just to have, but but really just to uh, break bread with them and try to get a little bit of a better sense of who they are. Um, I, if we decide that they are. Um, good allies we could we could call on them to uh help us uh take rayuna from the corkeen it wouldn't be bad to have an extra backup of support but i wouldn't want to take over rayuna with a bunch of bandits and then find that we have put Rayona in a worse situation than it was in before. Yeah, that's right. You scare out the rat and you let in the snake. <laughs> classic I, I, classic I, saying. I was dead. <laughs> um. If, uh, tr if bargaining with treasure did come into it, there's there's a fair amount of stuff that you did get from that place that, that we can, we don't have to go over it now, but yeah, you have stuff to, plenty of stuff to bargain with if it comes down to that. Yeah. Um, and anyway, the, the, you know, I, I assume that they'll, uh, you know, jump out of their shoes for the chance to break bread with us. You know, we're the, you know, heroes of Rayuna, and we've freed a village from the, from the grip of the Colkeen. You know, if they hate the Colkeen this much, they'll be glad for our tales. Hear how we did it. This is true. They sounded very interested in our, in our tales. So go back and, uh, 
a treat with them? Um, perhaps we could um, just just make a fire uh, next next door and yeah. wait for them to come over to our fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Invite them to come over to your fire. Okay. Great. So, um, and bring the like the whole gang, the cart and everything. Um, I don't know. You know what? I, time, timey doesn't say no. I think, I think she's feeling pretty full of herself. Why would they mess with the heroes of Rayuna? <laughs> uh, right, right, right. You got it. Yeah. Uh, truly feels, uh, like they were okay people. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, I think trying to, yeah, treat with them sounds, makes sense. If, if we have a, uh, if we have some trouble, it would be good to have a trick that we could pull out. To think of something. Well, you always have your magic in a pinch. That's right. We can, uh, someone could like hide in the cart in case they pull a fast one on us. And then that way we have like an extra person that they aren't thinking about. That's right. Have like Anika <laughs> lie down under a tarp or something like that and just hang out. Right. I think we could take them. How many? I can't remember their uh, number. Seven? Plus Varpu? Uh, it would it'd be tough, but <laughs> <laughs> um we probably could. I mean I didn't see that many weapons. <laughs> Did I? We saw knives, hatchets, and short bows. Yeah, we have we have chain mail and crossbows. Yeah. Yeah. Varpu, you didn't see Varpu's crossbow, but you gotta imagine she had one because she was a word keeper. Yeah. Um, Varpu was wearing chain and had a um, a short sword at her belt. Um, yeah. Why don't we go over there and just set up a camp nearby and. Um, in, in sight of their cave entrance and just uh, make a fire. Everybody cool with that plan? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that takes um, takes a little while to get there, moving the cart and um, Itsy through the, uh, you know, there's no roads here, so it's like, um, you know, you're always looking for, like, terrain that the cart can make its way across. And by um, late afternoon, you've... Um, well, by late afternoon, you're sort of like nearby and looking for a good place to camp. And a, a few of them, um, you know, like there was like a lookout that noticed you and then a couple others kind of like come and stand up, standing up on a ridge, um, you know, several hundred yards away. Um, they're just kind of watching um, as you uh, locate what looks like a good spot. Do you want like um, high ground? Uh, so you have like, you know, good prospect. Do you want um, a more kind of sheltered space with, a, you know, where you can't get surrounded, that kind of thing? What kind of a position are you looking for? Just open? Yeah, I, I feel fairly open is okay. Okay. That's fine. Okay. We're, we're familiar with these lands and... And is, are you, is somebody... Like when you notice that they're paying attention to what you're doing, is does is somebody gonna hide inside the cart so that the head count is consistent? <laughs> I don't think we should. No, okay. We wanna just be kind I of. I think we should just play it totally. Um, play it straight. Comfortable. Yeah. Just like, okay. Hey, here we are. You know, if one of them comes over nearby, just like, like wave to them and go back to making a fire. <laughs> okay. Great. Yeah, so that's exactly what happens. You get the cart into a decent place. Um, 
um, you let uh, Itzy off the yoke and uh, um, she starts browsing for, for grass and um, set up camp like usual. And yeah, so a few of them, you know, three turns into four. Um, they ne never come that close, but it is the kind of thing where maybe if Ibiki raises a hand and somebody kind of like raises their hand halfway back in return. Um, uh, yeah, so that goes on for, you know, an hour or something like that as it gets close to the evening. Um, uh, and they uh, gradually return um, to their side of the, I'll say that their, their camp is like over, there's like, um, they're, it's over a little rise that goes into their, the area at the mouth of the cave there. Mm -hmm. So there's, you don't have a direct visual on their camp, but you can see the smoke from their, from their campsite. Um, can we, just before anybody just kind of wanders off, just like, yeah, just like call them over like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, tiny. So somebody, somebody kind of hesitantly um, comes over, and there's a second person who tries to sort of like sort of stop them and talk to them, and they have a little back and forth, and then um, they both come over together. Do we recognize them from Rayuna? You, one of them is. Um, a woman named Mariuka, um, who, uh, yeah, is, is from Rayuna. <laughs> Paiviki, you come back. Tell Mariuka, you. what word from Rayuna? <laughs> How have you been? Ah. Oh. What brings you out here? Well, um, your elf friend met met our, our, our leader, Varpu. I have not been back to Rayona in some time. Um, more word keepers came after you left. There, there, are, there are six, and then her companion says eight. Oh, yes, there are eight of them now. And more came through, more went on. Um, eight more came through and went on to La Devisi. The, the village which was off to the northwest of Rayuna. Um, the Korkin have been laying their hand heavy upon this land. For what reason? Did the village, did you, did the people of Rayunu give them any reason to, f to firm their grip? No, no, no. The, the greatest news in Rayuna before now has been um, your victory against the beasts and your, your, um, your journey to the south. My heart, my heart is lifted by the sight of you returning to know that you could go off away across the highlands and come back to tell the tale. We, what, go ahead. What brings you to live out here with Varpu? The word keepers, you know how they are. They have become uh, their presence brings a pall over our home. El Mary has begun um, demanding a tax, which is sent off to the capital. And Varpu says that it is the, the will of the High Church of the Korkin to force us all to submit. Uh, Tiny stands up, fist clenched. El Mary, that dog, he grows fat and, fat and rich off the hands of our people. It's true, and, and word has it that they're, they, will, they, will, they are going to replace him with a true word giver, one of the priests. Um, and, and just, we know that that's like, a, like someone from like directly from the high church. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 
He is still there, but his days are numbered. Soon his rep replacement will arrive. And that is when Varpu, and then the, the other um, person sort of puts his hand on Mariuka's shoulder. And um, she says, oh, I've, I've said too much. Um. Uh. Uh, yeah, Taimi's just mad, uh, pacing back and forth. Two word keepers were enough. There's no quarrel, no unhappiness in Rayuna. We live off the, the, the generosity of the motherwood. We live in harmony. They bring their order here, spit. Yes, Taimi, yes, and that is why... That is why we have joined Varpu. Varpu will, will lead us against them. What is her plan? To drive them out and back across the river to consolidate these lands on this side, to drive out the word keepers from La Devesi and make the highlands unconquerable by the Korki. And then we will move against them. We have already begun. Um, and the, guys, the guy grabs her again. <laughs> and he just like shakes his head. No, no, no. Um, uh, we must return to our camp. Mariuka, you've said too much. Um, tell, uh, tell Varpu and, and everyone else um, What, what was the name of that <laughs> creature that you killed? <laughs> oh, uh, no. Uh, 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 Taimi shakes her head. I, I will tell her myself that they are welcome to our food. But I, will, I, I would look this Varpu in the eye. Yeah. Uh, I was saying, um, tell Varpu, tell, the, tell them all, come over. We have fresh... Uh, yeah, uh, Kova, <laughs> Kova Kaviri. <laughs> Kova Kaviri. Kova Kaviri. Uh, and they look at you like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what now? Yes, Taimi killed it. Uh, I don't know if they already left, but Taimi is walking off towards the direction of the camp. Oh, so Taimi's going to go with them. If they're, if they're walking, yeah. Yeah, geez. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I just call back, uh, I'll start cooking the Kova Cut Kaviri. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> okay, so they lead you over the rise and um, everybody's gathered around. Somebody's got a, um, uh, what was the, what was the traditional musical instrument of, uh, of Oh, I've got one. Um, I don't remember. I wrote it down somewhere. It's a... Uh... Right, well, whatever it is. Um, somebody's playing one of those. <laughs> um, and there's like a quiet little song going. Um, uh... And they are um, much to uh, perhaps the Taimi's interest. They are burning books. <laughs> um, There's a particular smell of the the kind of parchment um, going up in smoke. I mean, she's smart enough now with her nine intelligence to put two and two together that like these are obviously from the cave, and destroying the sorcerer's things are of like like super interest to her okay. so yeah she's she's pumped um, um yeah. is is uh varpu amongst them yeah varpu is sitting um sitting by the fire um uh you know picking them picking the meat off a bone of some animal somebody caught yeah um uh greetings varpu mm. one of the Heroes, I expect. And uh, um, Mariuka says, yes, uh, Taimi, the great hunter. 
the best the best shot in all of our village. Um, uh, uh, it is true. <laughs> Uh, I am Taimi. Uh, I hear that you and I might be very much alike, Varpu. Um, uh, she looks at you and um, stands up. <laughs> and she's a full, like, foot hot taller than you. Um, you know, and like, uh, 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 thick with muscle. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, says, is that so? Yes. I hear that we share an incredible disdain and hatred of word keepers and word givers. And she like had a, had a very stone serious face, uh, face and then like let a smile creep across her lips. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ha, that is true. We dealt with them, you know, some of them down in Salt Vallen. That's where, that's where you come from? Yes. What did you do? Who did you deal with? We would tell you. Join us at our campfire. I killed a great beast about two days march south of here. A big shelled beast that digs through the sand. And it produces a succulent meat. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I, could, I could use a, a, a change. Um... She says, I will, I, will, I will come to your camp. Um, she, she'd taken off her, um, her belt. And uh, um, so she picks up, she picks up her, her belt off the, um, the rock that she was sitting on um, and kind of like throws it over her shoulder and uh, grabs, some, there's like a, um, a clay jug of um, some kind of wine or something, and she sort of grabs that. Um, and people kind of look expectantly, and she says, um, well, don't you all want to meet the heroes of Rayuna? Oh, hey, oh! Um, and uh, proceeds to follow you back towards your camp. All right. So the whole gang is coming along. Party time. <laughs> Yeah, so they grab stuff, they grab food and things, and then they, um, everybody back at the cart uh, sees them um, top the rise and then uh, come down to you. Uh, so Paiviki uh, sees Varpu for the first time. How do you greet her? Um, she's busy uh, cooking, I guess, trying to make like a spit of sand crab. <laughs> yeah, okay, great, yeah. <laughs> And um, she's kind of got a lot of smoke and stuff all around. And she turns and uh, kind of nods and, and smiles and kind of and, and calls, calls them over. We have some jugs of, of the, the you wine. Honey mead. You have the honey mead and then... Um... Honey mead, yeah. Did you, you still had some red cap left, right? Or did you leave that with... Uh, I don't think... No, we, we, poisoned that. we poisoned that stuff. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, so you got the, the honey made from um, salt wall. Yeah. Um, so she kind of um, walks over and kind of looks you up and down. I think she's a little taller than I am. Yeah. Is she also cool keen? Mm-hmm, yep. They're the only two, um, Varpu and Paiviki are the only Korkin here. And Paiviki says, uh, Knight's armor. <laughs> okay, are you wearing your chainmail too? Yeah. <laughs> we came back to see if uh, any other creatures had moved into the cave. Well, some, some did. Where did you get yours? She means the armor. Um, I got this from my service. And I got this, and she points to the scar on her, on her mouth. 
for not following the word. We convinced some word keepers to give us theirs. <laughs> convinced them. You didn't. Uh, uh, timey chuckles. Pipiki, you make it seem like it was diplomacy. <laughs> we ambushed them, surrounded them. We forced them to surrender. And if I had my way, their bodies would be lying at the bottom of a cliff. Mm. But they are not. Hmm. We, to we fed them some red cap and told them to behave. Told them to behave. And where are they now? Uh, perhaps farming on some island and off the coast. I don't know. You left them their lives. Um, so she spits on the ground. <laughs> those who serve the church, those who follow that word, none of them deserve it. This life. Don't you think that everyone deserves a choice? We gave them a choice. They can change their minds if they want to. Or they can keep farming. Mm. There's no time for that. I wouldn't risk it. Mm. Cut their throats and leave them to die. What if that had happened to you? Well, that's why I'm not a word keeper anymore. It can't happen to me. I'm willing to, I'm willing to die bringing them to their end. Where was your, where were you stationed, Varpu? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> <laughs> she was stationed at the, um, the first village, the first town outside of the capital to the, um, so several days to the east of Reuna. A town that's sort of roughly the size of Sakagara. We never stepped foot in Sakagara. <laughs> no, you, 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 got glimpse, you got a glimpse of it. We saw the matte painting, but uh, <laughs> yeah. it was awesome never... looking from a distance. Um, uh, that's a far way. That's a far way from here. Um, you traveled a great distance. Why the Highlands? Well, here we can leave and it's hard for them to come after us. Mm. With the help of the people that live here, I've learned the ways of, of these lands and it's easy to escape from and, and hide if we need to. And then we can attack them on the road, take what we need when we need it and return to these places. So. I owe you my thanks, I suppose, for ridding the cave of the beast because you have given us a, a perfect place to call home. Uh, the beast was no fool. The place is defensible and well laid out. Most likely one of the reasons that att attracted the sorcerer as well. One of the reasons we returned is because we were concerned that we might have left something that would allow somebody else to gain access to his dark powers. I saw you burning the books. I personally think that's a step in the right direction. I think it's a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? There could be something useful in there. Uh, 
words have brought nothing but pain to this world. True, true. It's a kind of sorcery itself, the written word. The way the, the high priest can send out messages to all of his underlings and they will execute these orders without ever having laid eyes on the man. Execute them based on pigment on parchment. Oh. Words are for cowards. So? You would say otherwise? Words can be weapons as well. Yes, I know, but they are, they are weapons of mind and tongue. They are not steel. They're not the point of an arrow. They bend the minds of those who read them and make them weak and worse and lacking will. Have you felt the... Have you found yourself under the thrall of magic? Have you felt I, the power of that word? The priests of the high church. I'm sure you know the stories of how they can bend the will with what they speak. That through their, their voice alone, they can command people to do things. If you call this magic, I suppose I have been its victim. Um, we left Reuna because we felt ill-equipped to deal with the word keepers. Our hatred for Elmeri was burning like a bright sun, but we sensed that a violence might befall our, our, our friends and family if we didn't approach the problem of the word keepers with swiftness and strength and competency. <laughs> Jaime would never say the word competency. <laughs> um, uh, since we've left, we've seen a lot, we've seen a lot of things that we never thought we'd see, but maybe was the most important was dealing with those word, oh, Jan. Yeah, Jan dropped out. We'll just wait for him to, he okay. to go back up, yeah. Um, Oh man, Taimi's in love. <laughs> Watch out, Anika. This like <laughs> if Varpu wasn't a Colkeen, I would be like, is this like a time travel storyline? <laughs> or you're counting yourself in the future. Yeah, is Taimi like a like a cable sort of character? <laughs> What's Mirren thinking during this whole thing? Mm-hmm. Feeling sorry for her. Feeling sorry for Varpu? Yeah. <laughs> so are the Corkin bigger than other I don't know, ethnic groups? On average they're they're taller, they're, they're taller yeah. than the um than the Metsa or whatever we decided you guys were called. I can never remember mm -hmm. that. How far mm -hmm. How different are they from like the Reunion like culture? They're, um, I think from your perspective, from Warren's perspective, it's clear that they have some um, shared ancestry. Like they came mm -hmm. from the same original people probably, but sure. some things, at some point they were separated into a more Northern group, which is the Corkine. And then these guys, the, the Taimis people who, um, you know, basically populate most of this continent that you're on right now. Um, 
it's not a it's not a expansive population it's pretty, pretty somewhat sparse but um so and i think in Weirin's understanding and experience um you know an enormous amount of time has passed since those two groups were separated for whatever reason and that this mm -hmm. um current kind of uh invasion by the corking was is the first dramatic interaction that these peoples have had in um a really long time wow some of this stuff feels like so long ago what are you like looking the, back at the early i was trying to find i didn't want to i didn't want to just ask i wanted to try to figure it out on my own <laughs> what what the name of like the head guy is it the corva the head guy of the church yeah the head of the colkeen like their emperor or whatever um yes it's the corva is that from your memory you're pulling that out that's amazing well i was trying to confirm it i guess it is from my memory he is both a high priest and king mm. wow is it is it more of a i think at at, at, at one point it felt more like a, a court based society Mm -hmm. Is it more mm -hmm. of like a church-based society now? It's kind of a combo. It's, um, there is, the, the church is kind of the basic infrastructure, but within the church, there is an actual high court of noble houses. There are five main noble houses, and each, um, you know, each one has a role in the church of some kind. So it's kind of both of those things. Mm -hmm. John Speck. Hey. Sorry. We Welcome. Sorry yeah. about that. I think no uh, our, our internet died for a moment. Yeah, ours, the, ours has been doing that too. Did you guys figure it all out? <laughs> <laughs> it's all yeah. resolved. Uh, Great. He's a time traveler. Yeah, Taimi was just, John was just saying that it's like meeting Varpu is like meeting Taimi in the future. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah it's like a, a grim dark. Mad Max. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, okay, sorry. So, uh, Tiny was just saying something, right? Do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, we were talking about the... Oh, I think I was just words. saying that, like... Hmm? Oh, yeah, no, I just said words. <laughs> yeah. There I think I was talking about how, like, I, I, I think because Muirin must have told me you know, that this accusation that, like, we ran was thrown out there. And Taimi's not going to let that sit. So I think that he's just, like, saying, you know, when we left, we didn't think that we were ready to deal with the problem here. We didn't think that we had right, the skills, the strategies. We didn't have a plan, and our presence there might have caused more harm, you know. The, just us being there could have roused up the word ke keepers, and made more trouble and so we left and ha after leaving we've gotten stronger and we've dealt with the word keeper and word giver in salt Valen. um and we and so yeah, back to the present and uh we were returning for two reasons one and i, I looked at topias i don't think that i'm shaming him here one of our number uh was wounded down during a valiant battle to the south Mm -hmm. And we're, we seek to bring him home um, for at least a bit of respite. Um, but the second is with these skills and strength that we've acquired, we seek to unseat the word keepers and word givers, just like we did in Salt Wallen. From that alone, it seems as if our goals would align. As long as... You don't plan to send them off to an island. That is not how I would deal with them. No. Because my goal is very simple. The little river will run red with their blood. <laughs> that is very simple. Um, uh, 
Yeah, El Mary will pay for what he did. When the Colkeen were just a whisper, a rumor, travelers from a strange land, he hung his cape up on their rack. He wore their, he wore their stupid hat. He lived in their stupid home. He's yes, just as guilty. He is just, he is a coward. We will, we will take his things and swat him on the ass and watch him run off into the hills to be eaten by animals. He's not worth our time. Varpu, we care very much about the people of Rayuna. My concern is that they are safe. Just as the Korkin came and endangered the people, we don't want to put them in a worse situation than they are in now. You heard the two that were here before. Two word keepers have become eight. The worst thing we can do is nothing. Soon eight will be 16, <laughs> and 16 will <laughs> become a lot. <laughs> yes, the example of Hukunut, the town, the town on the waters, they were able to, to keep the word keepers at bay. I was one of them. I, one of my tasks was to force that town to submit, and they didn't. It was, it was, an agreement was made between the leaders of that place and the high court that the word keepers would not set foot and they would maintain a relationship. That agreement was made by Parley, but that doesn't interest me because to parley is to use words. Do you know what they do to a word keeper who breaks their vow? They no. tried to do it to me. They cut out your tongue. Ugh. Barbarous. They tried and I wouldn't let them. I, I, I would ask uh, Barpu what would be her goal after she rids the land of me. the Corkeen. <clears throat> All the land? What would, you, what, <laughs> what, would you, what would you do next? Once we push them back into the sea? <laughs> yes. Let me... Let me just muse upon that idea for a moment. This would be good. <laughs> then, every settlement, every village, every town is its own. Each to themselves, free to trade and treat with the other. This will be the world once the words are broken. And uh. what if we what if we find word keepers who are who see as you see then they may join us and when would they get that chance under your plan at the edge of my sword to their throat <laughs> um but are you varpu a ruler yourself are you wanting to rule these lands and rule these people after freeing them i think i've made it clear to you the distaste i have for letters strung together <laughs> <laughs> Are made of words. 
I am a leader, I will say that. Am I not right? Leary goes, Varpu! <laughs> but one day I will stop leading. I will lead because I will be bleeding out into the earth. I, I mean, I will stop because I am bleeding out into the earth. Or because I will finally lay down my sword once they are gone. That would be a good day. Those were good days. I don't wish to rule anyone. I wish to lead these people against those who would cut out my tongue. And the tongue of Aseri, of Ladevisi. You know of him. And you guys have heard the name before. It's the guy who, when the Korkin tried to take over Ledesvi, there was a little bit of a resistance there, more of a violent resistance than Rayuna offered. And um, uh, they, the Korkin actually had to re re retreat it because a local man by the name of Aseri uh, led a, a group against them. Um, that was just a, a, a legend from the early days. Yeah, those were stories that you knew before. Yeah. And we're on. Okay. Here we go. Hello, gang. Um, our last session was somewhat um, broken up by internet issues. Um, oh, yeah. But um, when last we left off, we were at a, a fireside chat uh, with uh, one Varpu word breaker, they call her. Um, <clears throat> who, with uh, her gang, uh, has moved in to the Cave of the Beast. Um, and among um, the things that you've learned is that uh, Varpu is uh, passionately opposed to the presence of the, um, at least I guess the presence of the High Church and its operatives, which take the form of the word givers and word keepers. You're not sure exactly how Varpu ran afoul of them in the first place, but you know that she herself was a word keeper. And that, um, let me show you a picture of her actually. There we go. <clears throat> Uh, and that scar on her mouth came from um, when they were attempting to cut out her tongue and she managed to uh, uh, break free of um, uh, her captors and escape. Uh, that came out during the conversation that you guys had. Um, uh, yeah, and I think that we can remind ourselves that Tainini was very um, uh, smitten, perhaps not in a, not in a romantic <laughs> way, but like really very taken with uh, uh, Varpu's um, determined uh, and definite opposition to the occupying powers, uh, whereas um, Paviki is a little trepidatious about the potential for violence in this case, and everybody's concerned, of course, like the safe, about the safety of Rayuna as far as that plays in. And um, the two things that were sort of left hanging when you guys got interrupted before uh, uh, Jan, you were going to tell us something about, you had, you were going to have some thoughts about, share some thoughts about Paiviki's mother and father and their, um, potential, um, history that we might not know about that might relate to this somehow. I remember you started saying something like that and then we got cut off. Yeah. So I just want to reintroduce that idea. Um, <clears throat> you also mentioned that, um, Paiviki would not, um, you know, is, is definitely not, trusting of Varpu. I mean, you guys don't know her very well, but already, you know, Paiviki was already kind of a little concerned and put off by, by Varpu's kind of militant stance. Um, so those are the two. Oh, and then you guys had thought about, as far as an approach to um, uh, uh, pushing back against the uh, word keepers, what works best um, with the least amount of danger was the kind of... Uh, strategic concern that seemed to arise. Um, uh, does anyone want to add anything to that that they might remember about the exchange so far? Uh, I have a note here that we didn't t talk to Varpu about 
Hukunut. Mm. Uh, apparently, there was an instance where the village was able to parlay with the word keepers and word givers. And I got the sense that uh, Paiviki wanted to hear more about that. <clears throat> because that seems to be an option that she's interested in for Rayuna. Right. Like, how do you keep them? Right. How do you, how did, how, how could, is how, how did they do it? Here? Yeah. How did Hukunit do it? Yeah. Hukunit? Is that you saying? I guess if you were at like the Hukunit. <laughs> in my Finnish accent, Finnish, in Finnish, you put the emphasis on the first syllable of every word. So it's Paiviki, Taimi. We don't have to be strict about that. Paiviki, but. Hi, Vicky. Hi, Vicky. Well, we're not in Finland anyway, so. Right. Now, this is our own <laughs> totally bastardized version of. <clears throat> um, yeah, so that's the scene. It is evening. Um, you got a fire going nearby the, um, the wagon. Uh, you've uh, uh, roasted up some of the. Um, <laughs> ground lobster or whatever the heck that special creature was uh, that Taimi um, named. Um, uh, and it's the four of you, so it's Taimi, Paiviki, Muirin, <coughs> and Varpu um, gathered around the fire. And, you know, I think Anika is within listening range, but not like right there with you. Um, and the rest of um, Varpu's um, gang are, are, you know, kind of in the general vicinity. And there's not, you know, the thing that's noteworthy is there may have been an initial kind of bristling, especially from Farpu herself, but because these people are Metsa, some of them are actually from Rayuna, um, there's no sense of, um, uh, of hostility or potential for, you know, um, aggression. It, it seems like people are pretty there's a general air of excitement because you guys have returned and that's really, you know, there's not a, not a lot of news in this part of the world. So that's like a kind of a big deal that these people that left long ago have come back. There's an elf with them. Well, yeah, the elf is real. It's not just this story. Um, and they've got a wagon full of stuff. I wonder what's in the wagon. You know, that that's what's going on. Oh, did you stop them from burning any of the books? No. <laughs> No, I'm thinking about trying, but I haven't, no, I haven't stopped him. Um, oh, when I got cut off the other time, sorry about that, um, the, I was just um, thinking that Paiviki, probably it's coming to a head for her that she doesn't really know much about her um, parents and where they came from um and i think that her father was keeping her sheltered um in terms of like not giving her a lot of information mm -hmm. um, but that she picked you know she would inevitably pick up some little cues here and there and things to wonder about um so i think she's thinking about actually um i was thinking that she was you know partly raised by different people in the village um, from when she was like six years old or something like that. So I was thinking that she would be curious to talk to like Teeny um, about or, or anybody else that she could uh, th think would know about it. Like what's the story with her parents and you know what do they know about her dad and um just this this idea of like fighting against the word keepers and then being like whoa wait a minute like uh like who am i where do i come from? <laughs> I, I might be fighting against my own uh you know siblings or something who knows yeah, yeah. how does paiviki feel when she does see someone um, there is there is a distinct physical difference between uh, Korkin and Metza, even though one imagines they came from the same kind of original, you know, or earlier place. How does Paiviki feel 
I mean, I guess she's pretty familiar with Corkeen being around because of the word keepers that were already in Rayona, right? Yeah. That would have been her. So I guess that does that raise that raises that raises the kind of questions you're talking about, I guess, right? She has conflicted feelings because on the one hand, she has affection for her dad and um you know, and sadness because she wasn't with her parents for very long. Um, but like a sort of a deep sense of affection. And then all the Corkeens she's met have been jerks. So she <laughs> <laughs> has like this bristling kind of uh, gut, you know, gut instant like dislike reaction. Yeah. And do we know what happened to her parents? Um, I was saying that she didn't really know. I mean, okay, uh, it's a mystery. They just disappeared at some point. Well, I, no, I think that her. Uh, what I was imagining is her parent, her father, actually came with her, and she doesn't really remember her mother in any real way. Okay. She just had like, ghost memories of her mo mother, but that her father brought her to Rayuna, and um, she doesn't really know why. She sort of assumed that he had something to run away from or to try to get away from you know and then now she's probably thinking a lot that probably he was a word breaker of his own um in some ways and had to leave but she didn't know she wonders what that word that word breaking was um if that was if that was what happened um and I, I was in that classic, um, uh, what you call uh, orphan kind of storyline. I, I, I was thinking that her father died um, when she was around six years old. Okay. And um, maybe she didn't know the details of that either. Um, do you want to say that that's what happened that he actually did die but but you and you don't know the details or do you want that to be a, a mystery um no i think that um he did die okay she doesn't know what happened to her mother because he didn't talk about her but he did die and um but i think as a six-year-old maybe the mystery is why did he die um like, was he sick or was he poisoned or was he, mm -hmm. um, you know, something else? Got it. Anyway. Okay, great. Good to know. I just jumped back to this, this portrait of the three year to remind, so we can remind ourselves who our, our main characters are here. It's always yeah. good to look at this occasionally. I think you're all sort of looking different than you do in these pictures now, though. You've been through a lot. Um, mm -hmm. People are wearing armor, have different um, weapons and things. Um, uh, okay, great. And um, how does the, is there anything else you guys want to talk to Varpu about? Um. I, I guess uh, uh, a few days ago when we were in that cave filled with the pico that I told you about, I assume we've been talking. Yeah. Um, and I was uh, 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 drawn to that magically enchanted stone and held fast as if in the stickiest sap that one could imagine. Uh, the only way that I could escape was to break my armor. Um, and I was wondering if there's any among you who might be able to help me fix it. Um, uh, um, Varpu kind of looks around uh, at everybody there and then just kind of like, not among these peasants, um, but uh, every word keeper must know how to mend their own gear. Are you wearing the torn shirt or is that in storage? No, I, I wouldn't put it on. I mean, it, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't wear it. Um, would that be an imposition? Uh, 
I do not. I, I, I do not fix broken things of strangers. Uh, uh, I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess I, I just, I just okay. shrug. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Donna, what's Mirren, uh, how's, what's Mirren thinking about, what's Mirren doing, first of all, is Mirren, like, drinking something, eating something, and then what is going on with Mirren in terms of, like, observing this, uh, conversation? Because Mirren's been pretty quiet during this exchange, right? Right. Uh, I think Marin is thinking um, about, well, Marin has sort of like given up on like um, convincing Varpu to, you know, maybe work together, but is sort of just observing the rest of the group to see if there's anyone that would be like interested in like, um, some sort of strategizing, knowing that obviously they follow, they're very, very loyal to Varku, um, yeah. but still thinking about how to maybe bridge, bridge those um, differences. Um, yeah, so if there's anyone that looks like they're interested in the elf, maybe. <laughs> Uh, that you might uh, want to eventually get to know better. Okay. See, yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. Actually, why don't you um, go ahead and find answers to see? Is that int or is that? In this case, it would totally be wisdom. Okay. Awesome. That's the one I like. You're basically trying to read people. Uh, okay. Uh, six plus two, okay. eight. Um, you get, um, I think out of the people, we, we, I think we figured out there were seven people in, um, present and currently in, um, Varpu's gang. Um, out of those, um, you see, you, you note at, you know, kind of like furtive glances or kind of whispered exchanges with glances in your direction from three of those uh, seven people. Um, so there's definitely, there are definitely people who are, have a particular interest in you or either like, you know, fascinated by your presence or, um, um, you know, that, that you're, you're sort of an exotic site for them. Um, Might be more like friendly towards... Possibly, they're definitely interested enough to like um, where you might, they might be more um, agreeable to you than the others. Yeah. John, did you happen to write down the name of that, um, the woman who you guys spoke to last week? Uh, the woman? Remember, there was somebody from Rayuna who you guys kind of... Maruka. Oh, yeah. Maruka? Maruka. Maruka. Yeah. Mariuka? Something like that. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. I couldn't find my notes on that, so um, that's awesome. Yeah, so Maruka is um, one of those people, Donna. Oh, awesome. And Maruka told us that um, that there were eight word keepers in Rayuna now, and that eight more had gone to the the village up to the northwest. Yeah, the the mountain village. Yeah, eight more had gone to La Devisi. La Devisi. Yeah. Did she say? Did she say when that happened? Um, that's all happened. The big kind of changeover all happened in the past. It's all happened within the past three weeks. Let 
one, two, three, four, five, six. And I think you guys have been gone for at least eight weeks. Yeah. Um, was anyone else going to talk? Um, cause I can go for like, it. Bring, like a, bring, um, maybe walk over to with T and ask, um, Marika, um, how she's doing and then also what, um, Yeah, I guess warm up to her, maybe ask a little bit more about why, why she joined and when she left Rayuna. Right. Would it have been less than three weeks ago or would it have been earlier than that? That... That Avaryuka left the village. Um, it could have been um, any time since you guys... It could have been before or after. You get the impression, I don't know if you guys learned any details yet, you get the impression that um, Varpu forming this gang was independent of the increased word keeper presence in Rayuna. That Varpu had, you know, decided to basically call the word keeper's enemy and then went about kind of creating this gang. Although, and I know, I guess it makes sense that the Rayunans would have been particularly prone to join after the work keeper show up. Yeah, so I guess Maruka would have joined um, within the past three weeks, yeah. Now that I'm talking it through, that, that, that's what makes the most sense. So she's like a newish follower. Yeah. This, yeah. Can I ask how, like, how, how do you join Varpu? <laughs> how do you join your game? <laughs> Like what? Uh, um, yeah, what's the? Um, do you have an overarching goal to the conversation, or are you, or are you just sort of general uh, uh, information gathering? Which is totally fine. I'm just curious. Yeah, uh, I guess ultimately the goal is um, get her to trust me and the group, um, Taimi and Paiviki, as. And see our um, goals as the same. Ooh, um, wow. Yeah. Okay, so to get somebody on the inside of the gang who will be sympathetic to your goals and see them as the possibility for alliance or collaboration, or at least like symp sympathy. Sympathy, at least, yeah. Okay. Alliance, nice. Great. Well, to answer your question, um, um, actually, real quick, if you could. Help me a few, figure out a few things about Maruka. Um, would you roll a d12? Mm -hmm. Two. Okay. And then, um, uh, will each of you guys roll percentile dice? Oh boy. And from that, let's see, uh, Jan first. 24. John? 98. And Donna? 83. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, so to answer your first question, just, just you know, whatever, maybe it's small talk or whatever, but Eureka says, um, Varpu, as, 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 as you know, as, as I think she has made clear to you, gives little credence or distrusts oaths or promises. She does not make us swear any kind of fealty or, or, proclaim her as our leader above all. And maybe that's why we feel um, so strongly about her as a leader. Um, she does not ask um, 
the things that the high church asks of us to swear ourselves to them from varpu says that if we will fight then we may follow her it's a choice that she gives us and so we choose to follow her there are no threats sometimes the days are lean but um in the end, we are, here, are all here by our own, uh, our own free will. And then, Donna, why don't you roll to... Oh, this is interesting. Are you keeping company to maybe get a bond with Maruka, or are you negotiating the, the thing you're negotiating being her trust? Oh. Um, is the difference that the bond means that there's like an actual stat, like a plus one. You'd have a mechanical connection that she can help you or you could help her in the future. Um, but, and then the, the negotiating trust means um, it's more. I think both of them would imply, you know, the bond would imply that there's some level of connection, but not necessarily trust. Mm. But it's something that you could, because it's a bond, you could kind of like, maybe it's a kind of thing, maybe you could call it in like you owe me kind of thing or like, Hey, I thought we were friends kind of thing. Um, whereas the trust is like, you're, you're just kind of like trying to kind of, um, yeah, just get in her good graces and, and, and help her understand that, um, you know, maybe your, your goals are in parallel. Okay. Meaning that like the trust is more like, um, it would be like a luck, like it'd be lucky that she just happens to like, feel like that connection without feeling like the quid pro quo situation? Is that um, yeah, it all depends on her personality. So the way you negotiate mm -hmm. this phrase is when you want something from someone that they don't want to give up, and the only reason somebody would not want to give them your trust is because they don't necessarily know you so well, right? Right. Um, that that it's made, they make themselves vulnerable when they give away their trust. So that would be the thing that she doesn't want to give up. And then in your case, you would roll either intelligence to appeal to their sense of reason or charisma to sort of charm or convince them. Um, and the seven to nine result is they will do what, do what you ask, but only if you concede something meaningful in return, right? Mm -hmm. So then that would all depend on Varpu's personality and what might be meaningful to Varpu. I mean, not Varpu, I'm sorry, Maruka. Um, okay. And a six or less uh, that just won't work. It, they're not going to, they, she wouldn't give you her trust, but you would still have the option of trying another approach um, on a 10 or greater that they, then yes, she would um, be trusting. And I can, I'll just, yeah, I can say right now that it is a possibility, like given Maruka's uh, personality, mm -hmm. uh, that's why I'm even offering you the option. Like it's, it's definitely possible that you could earn it. Yeah, I would, I would go for the negotiate um, okay. the trust with my, I think my charisma is the same as my intelligence, so. Yeah, so then it comes I'll, down to, yeah, it comes down to how you imagine we're in, um, you know, doing that, winning over Maruka. Uh, she's just going to be friendly, so it'll be charisma. <laughs> okay, great. Awesome. A friendly elf? Special. <laughs> Very special. Go for That's it. That's true. Uh, awesome. That was a, uh, I think it's just 11. I don't have a plus to it. Yeah, if you rolled an 11, then that's an 11. Okay. Um, yeah, so by the end of that conversation, um, you know, I think there's a moment maybe where um, Paiviki looks over and sees um, you, you know, standing or, or maybe, I don't know, sitting Maybe it's sitting on, you know, one of you standing against the wagon wagon wheel and the other person's um, sitting on a rock nearby or something. And there's like a, uh, a moment where Maruka just kind of like, kind of laughs and um, her body language shows that um, uh, she's sort of like, uh, both a kind of like little, little like uh, uh, self-conscious about talking to we're in the elf who is a little famous in these parts and I'm very charmed that um, 
to, that Muirin is is doing that is like the, you guys are just having a conversation about uh, Maruka's experience. Um, yeah, and by the end of it, um, uh, you definitely get like a good a good feeling. Maruka, in your um, very brief estimation, seems like um, uh, she's particularly um, more kind of. Uh, polite and proper than most reunions you're used to. Um, there's just something a little more kind of, um, you know, she uses like turns of phrase and is a little more um, formal, I guess, than, than most. And uh, yeah, so by the end of that conversation, um, you feel like that you've made a good, a good connection there. Awesome. That meanwhile, back at the fire, is there anything else you guys wanted to talk to Farku about, or is it? Um... Um, I'm curious about, like, Taimi was reminding about uh, Hukunut mm -hmm. <laughs> and how that all went down. If Varpu's willing to share, <clears throat> um, yeah. So her. You ask, how do you phrase the question? Just like sort of basically what you just said, like what happened in Hukunit? Hukunit? Yeah, what happened in Hukunit? How is it that um, they uh, came to this strange um, group that other towns have not? So her face dar darkens. Um, you know, she's got this like, I wouldn't call it jovial, but it's this very, you know, clearly very confident person. Um, will suffer no one's nonsense. Um, you know, as Maruka just explained, like Varpu is like, I'm going, you know, I, I'm going, follow or not. Like that's Varuka's whole, Varpu's whole approach to leadership. Yeah. Uh, so her face darkens um, and she kind of stares into the fire for a moment. Um, and then she reaches up and she kind of like um, touches the scar on her um, on her face. The first squad of word keepers that the church sent into Hukunu did not return. It's a den of what they called thieves and criminals. And they were going to send more of us there. Have you, you've not been to Hukunut? Um, it's, it's not far. I would think that Paibiki maybe would have gone yeah, so you know that it's like a, um, they flooded this area in an effort to destroy it, and the people actually adapted to the flooded area and built essentially yeah. a, a town on, on top of this wetland, yeah. um, like a stilt town. And it's a rambling, um, uh, multi-level kind of warren of, um, of these things and it's turned into a bit of a trade hub because you can access it by the river and um, it's located in a good spot. And there's um, a lot of kind of illegal activity goes on there. It's considered sort of a den of thieves. Uh, and the very, very, once you get in there, you have to get there by boat. And so that's the first challenge. And once you're there, it's such a maze that it's a very difficult place to um, do what the work keepers were trying to do, which was try to establish some kind of order or whatnot. Yeah. Right. Um, and then, um, so Varpu says, they sent another squad, this time to burn it down, to show them a lesson. And that squad did not return. And I was in the third squad. And we had all heard what had happened and they ordered us to go and I refused. 
because I was not going to die drowned in the waters beneath that place. And it was my refusal, my breaking of the word, the oath that I took when I assumed the office of word keeper that put me on this path. I escaped with my life into the highlands. And this is my world now. And the word keepers uh, gave up? Made peace? What did they do? The church made a deal with the bosses of Hukunut um, that there would be a free exchange and they would be allowed um, free exchange of goods and trade would continue and they would be allowed to maintain their sovereignty. But it is only a matter of time before that place too falls. Yes. So, I am thinking that we work together to capture La Devisi first oh. and help them because they had already been resisting the word keepers and together I think they would help us if we helped them to capture Rayuna. Um, so her, uh, you meant you, when you say that her kind of demeanor towards you shifts, and um, she's been, you know, I mean, if not dismissive, just like um, you guys are amateurs, kind of is her attitude. Mm -hmm. When you say that, um, uh, her 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 expression just kind of changes and she kind of appears to be kind of reassessing you. Um, it's interesting that you say that, Paiviki. Um, Aseri has been um, scouting out La Debesi and should be back tomorrow for exactly the reasons that you state. He's been gathering information. Oh, and you guys may not remember last time the, um, this guy, Aseri, was mentioned. He is from La Debesi. He's the guy that initially pushed back against the word keepers when they first came in there and actually managed to like get a gang of people to force them out. And then they returned again and pushed him away and he became basically an outlaw. And he's been living in the wild um, since then with his own gang. Um, so Varpu seems to be implying that um, she and him are somewhat in league. Oh yeah. And he uh, should be returning from um, a scouting expedition to that um, that village tomorrow. Returning here. Yeah. Um, and uh, I well, um is uh can you say say that Taimi and um, Warren are in are in earshot as well. Oh yeah, I, I'm. <laughs> yeah, I'm listening. Yeah. Um, Taimi, what do you think of this plan? It doesn't sit well with me to travel all this way back, and to then put Rayuna behind us again. In no, I was. Hand. Yeah, go ahead in the hands of word keepers. And what's to stop eight from turning to 12 while we're gone? They won't die of old age in the time that we're gone. There could only be more of them. 
true. It's just if we try to capture Rayuna and then we have word keepers to the north of us and word keepers to the to the east. If we help La Divisi, then we'll have a lot more on our side. Yes, by Vicky, we we start high and we push them out through Rayuna back across the little river. We draw that line. And from there, we can decide what to do, how far to push. That's what I was thinking. We've defeated word keepers before. And we have friends to the south as well. We can call on. Um. Taimi, Taimi shakes her head. No, no, you, uh, uh, you, you, you cut off the, what's a good hunting metaphor? <laughs> uh, uh, you place yourself between uh, the, the uh, Oshkut, this like, kind of small like rodent thing, and its burrow so that it doesn't, uh, so that it doesn't route itself in deeper. <laughs> you know, if we take Rayuna, then there'll be no place to resupply or you know, get support. We'll isolate those uh, word keepers to the east. True. As with that has wisdom too. Either way, I think the first thing we should do is go to Rayuna uh, in secret and. Mm -hmm tell the people there what our intentions are so that they can spread the word and be ready. And I have some books that I need to dig up. Um, uh, uh, Varpu makes note of that. <laughs> Just narrows her eyes a little bit. And I say, Varpu, Varpu. You're right, words can trap you and control you, but they can also free you. I have seen no evidence of this. You are free to think what you will. Um, I, I'm gonna use that phrase in just regular day arguments. <laughs> <laughs> um. Those books over there um, by the fire, um, I'll wrestle you for them. <laughs> That's her laughing. <laughs> it's me and her laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you will? Yeah, you and me wrestle. For the books. Yeah, the fates will tell us uh, who's the stronger woman. And if I win? Uh, then you can burn the books. Oh, hi, Vicky. That is just more fuel for the fire. There must be some other prize. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Hmm. What's in your cart? What do you have to offer me that would be worth rolling around the dirt with the great Pai Vicky? There's no greater prize than that. <laughs> Taimi laughs at that. And you're totally tired. Like, um, she's totally, yeah, she's totally laughing. Like, um, what is type? What is? What do I have to offer? <laughs> the cart. Uh, the cart contents are in that Google Doc. Oh yeah. That John linked you to. Um, and then whatever you have on your person, I I guess. Yeah. Um, so the things that might you can imagine would be of interest would be any of the treasury things, right? Yeah. Um, there's honeymead. You got the honeymead from, from the Venati, and you got, oh, all the treasure is not listed on here, right? Except for the furs. Yes. Correct. There's the furs. Um, and then there was various little trinkets and gems, and the one, that one big beautiful kind of sash that was in the yeah. special box. I'm curious about some of those things to, to see whether they have any other properties besides what they their appearance yeah right um but um i don't want to give away everybody's good loot 
<laughs> right, you don't want to. Yeah, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> a wrestling match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what is? I'm trying to think of what uh, Pybiki's personal possession. Well, you know. Okay, so you. Um, um, uh, I, I'm, 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 I quite like that sword you're carrying. Oh, the sword. Remember that? Yeah, and, you, and I assume you wear that around. Yeah, that's a fancy sword. Yeah. Um, Which I believe you got from the word giver. Yeah. Yeah, it was the word giver's sword. The word giver's sword. That's of, uh, that sword is of Corkine make. It is yes. fine. Um, and it has those gems on it. Um, do you have one to replace it when I lose my wager with you? When you lose your wager, I get the sword. <laughs> when you yeah. win the wager, you get the books. <laughs> I got it. I just uh, need something. All right, let's do it. <laughs> is this a traditional form of, of, of wrestling? Is, it, is this freestyle or is it... Uh, uh, whoever pins... Whoever, whoever's back touches the ground first. Okay. Okay, great. So uh, there's much um, excitement at this notion. Um, uh, there's an area of open um, kind of gravelly uh, dirt where you guys can, um... okay, so do you, I assume you start standing facing each other and then you kind of go at it until, and the goal is to pin the other person? Yeah, or just to have their back touch the ground. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I once did uh, Scandinavian wrestling with my neighbor who's I mean, not Scandinavian, um, a Siberian wrestling with my neighbor from Siberia. Whoa. <laughs> he just kept throwing me over and over again. <laughs> is, there anything, <laughs> is there anything noteworthy about Siberian wrestling? Do you just... Well, in Siberian wrestling, you can actually, if you get someone to touch their knee to the ground, then you can also win. Their knee? Oh, Okay. So you're but just the, trying to get them off balance and and knee or back or anything. Okay. But the real move is you grab somebody like this, um, like up under their crotch and up over their shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just go like that. And yeah. <laughs> Were Once you guys just doing that in the yard, like in the grass, or in, in the grass? Yeah. Once you've had that happen to you like four times in a row, <laughs> pretty amazing. But my neighbor was like a physical education teacher and like a, a scything champion. A scything champion? Yeah. What, like he could scythe the most weak? He could scythe the most. In the shortest amount of time? The fastest. Oh, yeah, that's, God, they're wow. like, um, Amazing. They're, they're a little town version of the Olympics, you know. Oh, my God. That is so <laughs> cool. I've often, we have, we have an old scythe and I've often wanted to like sharpen it up and try to like cut our field that way but i haven't gotten around to it yeah oh that'd be a blast <laughs> What's the, i'm afraid i'd be working some muscles that have not been worked probably my entire life and it would knock me out after 20 minutes I assume. <laughs> um, so uh fantastic is that is that the style of, is that the corking or metza style of wrestling or or would you like to put some kind of spin on that oh that sounds good that sounds legit okay all right here we go. So a circle is cleared. Um, All right. There's much muttering and um, excitement, and um, uh, people are yeah, people are, are 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 into it. There's some drinking going on. Um. So let's do it. And I think for this, it's going to be yeah, it's sort of a strength competition, and. Um, You're gonna, so this is gonna be making a saving throw, and I think that, um, hmm, interesting. Yeah, so the stakes are, well, we know what the gambling stakes are. Um, ooh. I think that Paiviki wants to trash talk and, uh, <laughs> and see if she can gain some followers. Um, uh huh, uh huh. Maybe. You know, she's like, she's a, she's an alpha wolf, so she wants to go up a notch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, in Varpu's eyes as well. Um, and hopefully, 
Um, she doesn't want to. She doesn't want to make an enemy of Varpu, so she's not trying to like humiliate her or anything. Uh, she's trying to be friendly. Yeah, it's a, it's a right. It's a, it's a, a friendly competition. Um, you are the two biggest um, people, if not just women, in the area. <laughs> You've returned from afar, and here's this, um, this uh, successful uh, leader here. Yeah. Um, Everybody wants to see how this is. This is the most exciting thing that's happened here in a while. Um, so I'm going to take off my chain mail and yeah. sword and all that other stuff. Okay. Yeah, Varpu does the same. Um, in fact, Varpu just strips to the waist, like totally naked. Um, and um, let's go. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so this is going to be a strength. To, we'll, we'll resolve the whole trash talk. How does that affect the gang? Basically, if you win this, then you can make a charisma um, negotiated okay. role to win over the hearts and minds <laughs> sure. of some of the gang. Um, so for this, I think if you get... Um, on a 10 plus, it's you do it as well as one could hope. I think in this case, as well as one could hope would be to get Varpu into a compromised position but not quite pinned right so on the first roll yeah it's going to be at least a two roll kind of situation okay um and then on a seven to nine things will be a little more complicated on a six or less it's going to be kind of the, the opposite situation i think you guys yeah. are pretty well matched yeah it's going to take at least two rolls um either way win or lose and and possibly more than that but we'll see how it goes Okay. So what's your move going at her? Um, I, I think I'm going to mess with her and just um, kind of act like I'm really relaxed and kind of, kind of just walk around a little bit <laughs> and wait for her to do something and then... Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, and she totally, she totally just takes the bait. She like you start to do that, and she almost immediately goes Rah! and like runs. Yeah, out. and I'm waiting for that, and I have a special counter move that I developed as a teenager, scrapping in the streets of Rayona. Okay, awesome. See how how it works. All right, um, go for it. So she's got a it's strength, right? So she's got a two, but then my favorite weapon is hand to hand. Yep. So I'm gonna spend a metal to increase it to three is that right yep okay let me just real quick sorry just to review for um um because we haven't done that in a while i'm just gonna real quick um look read that over um metal represents blah 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 when you make any move with your favorite weapon, which for Paiviki is unarmed combat, before you roll, you may spend one metal to take plus one to that roll. Great. So you're at a plus three? Yes, I'm now plus three. Okay. Go for it. So I got a five plus oh. three, so an eight. Okay. Okay, so you go for it. Um, she just charges you. You go for the counter move, and just her sheer, um, um, the sheer force of her, um, I mean, I think you were unprepared for it. I think that when was the last time you wrestled somebody of this size and Never. power, right? <laughs> so I think, like, you go for that move, and she just, like. Well, yeah, and I was fighting the bigger kids. Yeah. <laughs> So she like slams into you, um, carries you back, um, and is like going to like, um, uh, you know, basically with the momentum, she's going to like, um, I mean, almost do that thing you described your friend doing. Like she gets one yeah. arm um, between yeah. your legs and another arm on your shoulder and she's trying to go for that and you're pushing back against it and you stumble and um, you're, you're basically about to fall. So you're on your, your back feet at this point. So what do you do next? Um, I think that Paiviki like kind of crouches down to get her center of balance super low. And then I'm going to try like a counter sweep and try to uh, grab her leg and flip her 
um, on her back. Okay. Um, go for it. I'm going to spend another metal if that's doable. Yeah. yeah, totally. How much metal do you have now? You've got like got four. Yeah, great. Ooh, I got another eight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Um, that doesn't work either. <laughs> Um, and, 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 like, <laughs> and she's uh you go for the counter and um um she just wrenches her arm around um digs her digs uh she's doing that you go for that um she like turns her other arm around and digs it into your um really hard into your rib cage like you know like maybe there's a crack <laughs> Um, just a really hard smash elbow into your rib cage. Um, your counter does make her spin um, a little bit off balance, and then she's got you right against the. Um, you put one arm down, and you're just basically holding yourself up uh, with the one arm. And if you get anything but a ten or higher at this point, you're pinned. All right. So this is the roll. Uh, I'll spend another medal. <laughs> The crowd's like, rah! Yeah. Fire poo! Fire poo! I need some cheering. <laughs> Anika, well, you know, Topias is cheering. <laughs> yeah. Topias is like, pie Vicky, pie Vicky. He's like shouting at, trying to shout down the other guys. Oh, yeah. I got a nine, <laughs> and I think I'm going to spend a luck. Okay. Make it a ten. Um, yeah, so, um, interesting. There, and I think, so tell me how, when you're in that position, like your arm is just about to give out, how do you turn that into a complete reversal on her? Um, so she's got, she's kind of coming down on me, and I got one arm on the ground, like holding myself up. Yeah. Um, Uh, <laughs> I'm not a good wrestler, so I, I don't know how I would do that. Um, <laughs> I think that actually, like, I push forwards and I get, like, my um, my head between her legs. Yeah, okay. Got it. Yep. So I'm trying to, like, and then I, start, I start to lift her off the ground so her legs are, like, this with my, my head sticking out between her legs. Right. So you're going to try to pitch her behind you? So I'm trying to, like lift her this way her body okay. her head's that way and my head's this way okay so you managed to recover under her yep <laughs> and she's like um great so now you now you've completely reversed the situation and now she is one step away from getting pinned okay uh, but it wasn't like a 100 percent 180 there that there's still one more step that has to happen <laughs> okay and and this will be like the, the, so it's just like the, you're you're doing that. You're trying to leverage your own strength. Um, she's putting everything she has on you. Um, yeah. So and this will and this I'm trying to think like I think at this point you probably have the upper hand. So I think the seven to nine is going to involve you succeeding, but at a cost. Okay. So if you get a six or less, um, sh she's going to actually succeed in driving you back into the ground. Um, yeah. and, uh, on a seven to nine, there'll be, there'll be some kind of um, cost. Um, okay. So probably a physical injury on your part. Great. <laughs> I'm going to spend my, I guess it's my last medal. I have, uh, <laughs> So if I'm level four, do I have five metal or just four? Because I'm, that's probably, I probably only have four because the other one is for a magic user. It's equal to your current level plus one. Um, then, yeah, it doesn't matter whether you're a magic user or, okay. you don't level independently. You're, you're, um, okay. Yeah. Well, then I have, I had five. Okay. And then down to two. I'm going to spend another one. Okay. Go for it. Try to flip this big woman. 
<laughs> wow. Box cars. Box cars. All right. Um, yep, so head, head up. Um, everybody's like, ah, Barpu, Pyviki. And then, um, final surge. And like, nobody, none of these people in their wildest dreams imagined anybody could lift Barpu off the ground. <laughs> like, no. And um, up, she's up in the air, and then, poof, um, crash back on the on the ground. Uh, the wind's knocked out. Um, uh, and she just, let's see, you sort of, and you both are lying on the ground. Um, uh, and she doesn't move. Um, there's a pause after, uh, and everybody's like screaming and yelling. I mean, I guess some of her people are disappointed. Some of them are not making any noise. Um, And then you pull yourself up and look back, and she's looking up at you um, uh, with this kind of like, huh, look, look on her face. I'm gonna reach did, not, did not expect it to go that way. I'm going to reach down to pull her up. Um, give, her, give her a hand up. Yeah, so there's a, um, there is like a little, you reach the hand down and there's like a pause. And everybody stops cheering. Um, and then she um, reaches out and slaps your um, wrist. Um, <laughs> and yeah, allows, allows you to pull her up. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll, I gotta give her like a big kind of like slap on the back, like, yeah, good one. She kind of bristles at that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe she feels that's a little patronizing. <laughs> um, um, and I, uh, I think she's not, I'm, I don't mean like patting her on the back, like, oh, nice try. But like, uh, um, like kind of like, a, like as I'm pulling her up, I'm just like, yeah, yeah, like. Like, give her, like, a big sort of, like, hearty smile, kind of, like... Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. Y you know, like... And then she say, like... I thought I lost. <laughs> I don't know how I did that. <laughs> um, Never been hit so hard before. Um, so she's kind of uh, grim-looking. She's not smiling and laughing. <laughs> um, uh, uh, and, and then she, she does like a kind of like, there's a moment where she's just kind of like going over what happened. And then um, uh, she kind of lets out a forced laugh. <laughs> uh -huh. um, next time, take the books. They're yours. Thanks. I have drunk too much. It's time for me to sleep. You can tell that she's in a very um, uncomfortable position. Yeah. She's not used to, um, uh, to losing this kind of contest. And she doesn't really know what to do about it. So she um, appears to be kind of bowing out just to, like, save face. Got it. <laughs> and now you get to roll your um, negotiate with Charisma to see how well you uh, won over her followers. Yeah. Um. And um, I think that, uh, how can Paiviki be tactful? Um, I think she says something like, we have been traveling for many days and it's good to be among friends again. And uh, it um, never in our 
wildest dreams would we have thought that we would find allies uh, out here in the cave of the beast. And then uh, says to Varpu and Rayuna and the Metza <clears throat> and hold up some honey mead to share with everybody. Ooh. Wow. Really loading the dice there. Okay, great. And your what's your charisma? Like sixteen or something like that? Uh yeah. Um, yeah, go for it. I rolled a six plus two. So okay. <clears throat> um, there, so there's like um, some little, some half-hearted responses to the call. Um, some people are talking amongst themselves. Um, Maruka comes over to you and says, uh, I think they would appreciate the rest of that honeymead. Referring to the all four bottles of it that you guys have. Oh. <clears throat> so basically she's saying that like, if you really want to sell these guys on your, on your position. Right. <clears throat> I, I glance over to T Taimi and um, Mirren. Did I, did Maruka say it loud enough for us to even hear? Um, I think I think that you you guys could be in your body. Yeah. Um, that honey mean was a uh, was a gift of friendship from uh, Salt Wall to Rayuna. That's all I say. Yeah. And then uh, Paiviki comes over to Taimi and says, uh, yes, and I think we need allies in the fight to get Rayuna back. Um, we sure do need allies. And I, I look at the path where Varpu left. <laughs> But not div not divided allies. This is a, uh, this is not a game that you're just. This is not a game, Paiviki. I think she'll come around <laughs> after you've embarrassed her in front of her people. And I'm saying this soft enough so that they aren't hearing. Sure. Yeah. 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 After you've bribed her, uh, her people? It's not her people. Or... S seems like it. Or, or... Sure, she won't hold them to an oath, but you don't leave your village and live in the wilderness for, for nothing. No, but I think that's the life that we're going to be leading as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, yeah, we've been on the road for months now. <laughs> I don't know what you mean by that. <laughs> I, 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 we're, unless we choose to go back to Rayuna and um, go back to living in our own houses, we're, we're outlaws as well. So we have chosen that life unless we choose to go back. So this is it. And... They can choose to come with us, or they can choose to come with Varpu, and Varpu can choose to come with us. They're not Varpus, more than they are not ours. Um, does does Mwiran have anything to add to this conversation, or is Mwiran sort of quietly observing? Um...
I think women want to save it for reunion, but maybe when reunions are free. Because um, it's used to say if we gave that to to the village, would it be confiscated um, and given only to the to the ward keepers? Um, <clears throat> so I, yeah, we're in these both sides that it could be useful <laughs> to gain favor. Um, maybe, maybe how much will uh, one extra bottle get you? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the wording of negotiate on a seven to nine, they'll do it only if you can see something meaningful in return. Yeah. And given mm -hmm. the number of bandits here, it has to be all of the honey bean. Yeah. Mm. Um, so I think we should have a, um, a strategy meeting amongst the heroes of Ryuna. <laughs> I think they like you, Paiviki, but you maybe went a little too far. <laughs> what should we do? I, 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 I was thinking to, uh, to go to Ladovisi first, but I can be convinced to go to Reyuna first. Okay, before you have the strategy meeting. Yes. <laughs> the gang is, uh, they're gonna like wander off and you're gonna lose the moment. Yeah. Um, this, so this is, you can either commit to giving them all the honey mead or take that loss. Um, that's your choice in this moment. And it's not like if circumstances change in the future, perhaps there'll be another opportunity to win them over. But um, right now, that's kind of what's at stake. You sure. get honeymoon and you'll win some hearts and minds. You don't, and they're kind of... Um, it's not like they're not having it, but they're just, you know... Yes. You're not going to win them over right here. I thought only that what is honeymoon for people who are oppressed. And there are reunions in that village or in this group. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, some reunions would be drinking some <laughs> <laughs> Which is maybe more than if we gave it <laughs> to the actual village. Yeah. So we know Taimi objects. Mirren, Mirren is on the fence. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's in favor. Classic. And I think, I think it's pretty clear that John Chad as a person doesn't have a problem with you giving him that. Oh, absolutely. No, <laughs> totally. Totally, totally, totally. No, this is, this is great. This is yeah, totally. It's totally about the relationship between Total Paiviki. Total Paiviki. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I do think Paiviki, um, ultimately, maybe you can just make that call because and then sort of like risk what um, our, how that changes your relationship with Taimi or Mwerin or... Um. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, I, I, I think... Um, um, I, I, before I make that call, I just go up real close to uh, Taimi and Mirren. I say, I think this is our chance. We can have these people fight with us or maybe they won't. Okay. Um, uh, there will be battle. There will be battle soon. And if, if, we're in, if we have the good fortune of having these people be by our side, you know, one ounce extra of loyalty might come in handy. But, you know, just, just be careful. Um, I'm going to take the honey meat and give it out to everybody. <laughs> yes. Ah, for Rayuna. Let's free up some weight. <laughs> let's bring up some, make some room in that cart. Yeah, let's ma Marie Kondo this. <laughs> <laughs> Honey Mead no longer brings me joy. 
<laughs> <laughs> oh, we still have the conch shell gift. Okay, we still have something to show. Oh, we yeah, do. yeah, yeah, right. From, yeah. Right, which was, you guys brought the tree, so um, that's a good, um, you know, compa or twin gift for, for that. Yeah. Um, yeah, great. So much rejoicing. Um, ah, baby G! Um, and uh everybody's everybody's um well into overindulging for the evening in the in the in the fruits of the labors of the vanati <laughs> and their bees <laughs> um yeah and so that uh creates a real um uh yeah somebody you know has their little drum out and they're they're um they're singing and um People are having a good time. There's many one or two kind of concerned glances in the direction of the cave um, where, where Varpu went, but um, uh, people commit <laughs> to the party. Um, nice. And I think it's fair to say that um, Paiviki has some sway over these people as a group and how you choose to take advantage of that well you know you can decide how that happens but you've you've done it you've you've gotten your uh uh you've established your influence and then i think privately once everything settles down a little bit and it's getting late i would check in with taimi and um moirin and say so what should we do? <laughs> um, uh, Taimi uh, kind of like rolls her eyes and shakes her head. Uh, wait, wait for the, the news of the city to the southeast or, or the northeast. Um, and then we can make a plan on how we... Uh, approach Rayuna and what's the name of that other city by the way I keep saying it uh La Devisi La L A H D E V E S I La Devisi yeah La Devisi a hard one to say La Devisi La Devisi <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to write it out phonetically What's the last syllable? Uh, uh, S I C. C. La Deve C. I guess. La Deve C. Got it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I. You know. Uh, we can't make plans without all of our uh, uh, cards, or you know, um, slips. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah, so there's this village to the um, northwest. <clears throat> uh, it's somewhere up in this area. And Hukunut is over here. So, yeah, was the plan here to discuss <clears throat> general strategy? Um, I thought to talk to the people of Rayuna at some point to let them know when we are coming and try to get them ready. Uh, uh, Tini can spread the word. And what, what, what do you both think? Um, giving a glance to the cart, 
I think we need to get Topias home. Yeah, I'm only afraid that if Topias comes home, then everyone will be asking where we are. Um, what state is Topias in? Uh, he is in, uh, good, well, I think right now he's totally asleep. He's been in good spirits. Um, you know, he is can't he... really use, uh, his right arm. Um, but he's like a soldier. He's like a, you know, he's a trooper. He's been, he's, he's, he's doing, he's doing fairly well given his condition. Mm -hmm. Well, I would, I, I, I would leave that decision up to him. He's earned the right to go home if he so chooses. But he's also earned the right to stay. We'll just need to have to come up with a good story for him if he does choose to go back. <clears throat> Mirren, do you have any plans, any ideas? Um, I agree with the thinking about Topias choosing. Maybe, um, uh, yeah, maybe he can even return alone and say that we're still, um, back at um, salt wall or um, far away. Um, oh, as yeah. like a as like sub as like a subterfuge, um, and then secretly tell people that we're Ooh. planning. A spy. That's a good one. <clears throat> so the oh yeah, so Pierce could be a spy. Yeah. Yes. Oh, like go to the village, like have a give some story. Yeah. And mm -hmm. observe what's going on, and then report back to you guys. That kind of thing. Yeah. If he chooses to, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um. Should we wait to see what um, Asari says? then make our decision. Um, I believe that that will greatly influence what Varpu wants to do. Um, and I'd like to have that information before I make a decision. Yeah. What do you want to do? Um, it feels uh, cowardly to get this far and to, to not free Rayuna. I don't know what it's like there. To be honest, none of us do. You know, we don't know what a full contingent, you know, is, is, is the boot on their necks or is it just stomping around making noise? But I don't like it. So close to the motherwood, it just seems unclean. Yes. So I would, I would rather, I would rather route them out. Uh, Varpu's got a good head on her shoulders. She seems to know what the fate of the word keeper should be. What do we do if we capture Rayuna and then um, turn to fight in La Devisi and? And then more word keepers come from the east. Varpu intends to hold a line. Um, yeah. So let's sleep on it. We can think. Okay, great. 
Um, is anybody injured? Uh, down on. Yeah, am I still down on different? Uh, yeah, I still have ability point damage. Okay. <clears throat> I still have a bunch of ability point damage. <laughs> Hmm. Interesting. Do you guys feel like you were just keeping company, or does that strategy session seem different from that? Um. No, not particularly. I don't okay. think that was a substantive enough talk. Okay. Um. And you guys have a campfire, so you take one to pass plus one to pass pass the night. Um, everybody consumes ration, so that's five. <clears throat> I am officially out of rations uh, with, with the, the remainder of my uh, lobster meat. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Oh, Anika will give me one of hers. Thanks, Anika. All and right. Topias. I think I'm down to three. Yeah, I don't have very much either. Um, Mwirin, why don't you roll to pass the night? <clears throat> and this is a... Uh, this area currently is unsafe, but not dangerous, so you get plus two to this roll. Actually, plus three because of the fire. You get plus three to the roll. Okay. Uh, six plus three. Nine. Everyone gets restful sleep. Those who ate and drank the night before each choose one from the list. Heal one plus con worth of hit points and or ability points. Uh, or awaken refreshed and take plus one forward to your next roll. Okay. I will heal we, one. We each choose it whatever one we like. Yeah, whichever one okay. makes plus one. Okay, cool. Take the plus one. The plus one I'll forward. Take plus one too. Um John, did you feed? Did Topias feed himself? Do you know? Does he have food? Yeah, I, I checked him off on the the, okay. the tally. Kids and you guys are gonna hang out. Sorry, go on. I think growing kids gotta eat. That's right. right. <laughs> he can feed himself. Yeah, uh, sweet man. So you're gonna pass the day and wait to see if a Sari shows up. Uh, yeah, that's 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 my plan. Okay, I think that would be useful to know. Yeah, can you guys, um, each of you, roll percentile dice for me, please? Uh, Jan first. Sixty-six. Okay. John. Uh, Twenty-six. And Donna? 50. 50, okay. Okay, cool. <clears throat> um, and then who's got the lowest luck? Look at the, I guess the character keeper is the best way. Down to 10. Sorry, according to our PC records, we got a Paviki's at 10. Damn, Timey's at 16. Yeah, so Paviki's the lowest. So make a get lucky for me, please. A luck, get lucky roll? Yeah. Okay. I rolled a six. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so the day passes. Did anybody have anything they wanted to do during the day? We can just cut to the next thing that's happening. Um, Ta Taimi would request to see the wizard's quarters. She, she trusts Farpu, but she just <laughs> needs to see it for her own eyes to see that like they dismantled the, 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 the seal that they talked about and they've gotten rid of all the books and that. You know, there's yeah. no shenanigans here. 
that they what, what are the shenanigans you're concerned about what they what might they have done that um i mean tin tin hat theories uh <laughs> that like we're encountering another like possession situation or like controlling situation oh, like, okay sure yep like i'm i'm so distrustful of magic that like even though I love Varpu and her mode de vivre, I still think that there's like a 0.1% chance that, you know, yes. there could be, there could be like a magician down there just like playing with a couple frog legs or something. <laughs> and you're so distrusting of magic that of course you want to, yeah. Yeah. And you have no trepidation about re-entering. No. Okay. No, no, no. Great. Um, I guess when you guys wake up in the morning, the books have all been piled by Paiviki's sleeping place. <laughs> all right. The remaining books, I should say, which is probably about half a dozen. Okay. Oh, okay. I was, yeah. We could totally fit those on the cart. Um, yeah, so you make your way over from your campsite to the cave. Um, I guess Barpu's out having... Um, some kind of porridge that somebody's made yeah um and kind of looks up at you as you um there's like actually just a really brief glance up at you and then kind of ignores the fact that you're approaching um uh good morning varpu um you know nod um i uh uh I just, yeah, I stand next to her. Uh, I assume that we like did the whole like Return of the Jedi three PO recap sort of story to them. Like we're like, oh, we went to the like you know, yeah, we yeah. went to the cave of the beast. Yeah, yeah. Um, last night when we spoke of this cave, um, its prior inhabitants, amongst their numbers, was a magician of strange and unnatural powers. Uh, his ability to control other creatures was um, disturbing and I was wondering whether I could enter the cave and inspect the magician's quarters. I trust you when you say that you broke up the seal on the ground, but the power that he had and the power that's been exerted on me has at times made me doubt myself and I need my own eyes to see it. Mm. Um, do as you want, stay out of my stuff. I give a, a curt nod and enter. Okay. And then um, uh, she gives like a, a gestures with her head towards uh, one of her gang a guy named Jal Mary, um, who was actually the guy that Mwiran ran into that first time. Remember when Mwiran was kind of scouting out the camp? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, Sand in the eyes. And he kind of like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that guy. Uh, he, um, you know, follows you. It clearly just, you know, to make sure you don't get up to any funny business. Yeah. Um, the goats are all gone. There's a little mm -hmm. goat pen in there, if you recall. Mm hmm um the carcass of the wolf has been removed um when you get to the beast's cave um that's all been completely um rearranged and there's like um that's clearly varpu's place now um she's got like a sleeping area they've taken a bunch of the old supply crates and kind of made them into like makeshift you know, actually dismantled them and kind of hammered them back together to make some furniture. Mm -hmm. um, and then you go through the tunnel in the wall that was in that cave, which leads down into the, down the, um, the ladder to the lower level. And you, so there's a, there's a torch there that you can use for, um, for that purpose. And obviously the sorcerer's study has been cleared out. There's no more books left. It looks like the bookshelves themselves were probably burned at some point. Like anything that could be... Oh, no, I'm sorry. So uh, Varpu's bed is the sorcerer's old bed, which used to be in there. So she's appropriated his bed. Um, his, his little study also had, was his bedroom. Um, but most of the furniture has been apparently destroyed. Mm -hmm. um, the the cave that um, had the cages in it that um, yeah, what's his name was building. 
uh, Durbin. Durbin, thank you. Um, that's been turned into kind of a um, uh, sleeping area for the gang. And then there's the hallway. Oh, there's the site where a uh, member poor um, Esaïs got struck by the black magic that um, yeah. uh, injured him. There's that hallway. Um, there's a blood stain on the floor where the sorcerer's body was. Um, uh, John Mary tells you that they uh, found the body and it was the first thing they burned in order to kind of purge the place of evil. And uh, yeah, I, I, look, I look at him and I, and I nod firmly. Um, and then you get to the little alcove where there, there's that shrieking. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> the lag tight. Yeah, or yeah, the lag might. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that thing is gone. Um, um, and uh, John Mary says, don't ever try to eat one of those. <laughs> <laughs> And then you get to the room, um, and so all of the floor where it had been carved out is there, and all the silver is gone. Um, Does it? Okay. Um, okay. I, I look around, and I, I put my hand on the ground, feel the ridges. Um, I look across the, the room at it, it was like, was it a, a sculpture of something that we took the big rubies out of, or was it? Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Just was, natural divots in the wall. I believe it was a, de a demon's face. Like a, yeah, yeah, that's what I remember too. Yeah. Yeah, it was a carved, yeah, crudely carved demon head. Mm -hmm. um, that gives me a chill. I was feeling pretty cool, but seeing that face gives me a chill. Yeah, John Mary doesn't even come in the room. John Mary like stops at the door and just like, yeah. Um, I don't have it's very cold down here, and definitely the vibe in this room is not a good one. Yeah. Um. I don't have anything on me that would damage a, a, a bas relief sculpture on a stone wall. So <laughs> I, I, turn, I turn around and leave the room. Okay. Uh, wasn't there like a workshop room? Yeah, there was kind of a middle before, before like adjoining the study bedroom. There yeah. was like a little alchemical um, workshop space. Yeah. And John Mary tells you that they sent somebody with all that gear to the marketplace in Reuna to see if they could pawn it off. Okay, great. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I have no ability to sense magic, so I, you know, the the, you know, the artifacts, the body, the cages are gone, all that stuff. Yeah, I, I'm. Uh, thank you. Mm. Thank you. What did you want to? Did you leave something behind when you were here before? Why, why, why did you want to come back in here? No. If, if there's... There's not much that scares me. But when we... One, if, since the time that we've left Rayuna, the one thing that has consistently made me uneasy and at times extremely fearful has been magic. It's unnatural. It, I've, I've felt it control my movements, poison my mind poison my body and the thought of any bit of that still being around this close to Rayuna was unacceptable and I just needed to see for myself that you all had cleansed this place of the magician, his body and his belongings I hear you on that hey and he points at the blood stain on the floor is it true that Paiviki killed him? Yeah. Yeah, she did. We were hiding behind tables and, and boxes, and she dashed across the room and stabbed him in the chest. He struggled. He he tried to use some magic on her, but she fought through the she fought through it and killed him. Mm. 
It was a moment of, it was a moment of boldness that saved us all. And when you went south, well, I guess I heard the story last night. It's hard to imagine what else is out there away from this place. Yeah. (laughs) Some of it's, some of it's wonderful. Some of it's exciting. Um, There were moments that my heart was beating. My eyes were darting. The hairs on my arm were standing up. I felt alive. But there was other moments where I felt like I was in the palm of somebody else's hand. That my very being was being toyed with like a a, a futsa ball. (laughs) 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 Whatever. Fantasy toy. <laughs> a football, yeah. What made you feel that way? Who toyed with you? Um, a, a magic user, a, a wizard, amongst amongst those uh, snarling, disgusting pico that we told you about. One of them oh. had oh. had mastery over uh, uh, the unseen forces that surround us. Mm. You, you, we've heard stories of how you hunt in the motherwood mm. and n- nothing you've seen there was as frightening. I pause and I think, no, no. Well, it makes me not want to go any further south. <laughs> Rather, um, the better that we turn our attention to uh, people like the Corkine, they are things that we can see in the light of day. They are things that bleed. Mm, yeah, tiny nods to that. I'll nod to that. Um, yeah, when, when, when there were forces that were unseen uh, exacting themselves upon me, uh, all I wanted to do was be back in Rayuna. Uh, but sometimes it was worth it. Um, and I describe the ocean and I describe my experience learning how to sail a boat. You know, moments, moments like that make it worth it. And I want that for everybody. I want all the people of, of Rayuna to be able to travel to the south and see the, the, the great sea. I want the people of Salt Ballin to come here and see the motherwood and, and you know, feel its safety and protection. That's why I want to route out these Colkeen. Dude, roll and keep company with Del Mary. <laughs> uh, is that plus anything? No, you don't have any bonds with him yet, so it's zero. Okay, then it's just a seven. Um, okay, then um, you get to choose one from you gain a bond with him, he gains a bond with you, or you refresh all marked bonds. So it's one of the first two. Um, I'm going to give him a bond with me. Okay. Great. I don't think Taimi was making out to like make a friend with yeah, this yeah, conversation. Yeah. yeah, I think you, yeah, you, um, I think in the course of it, that, of course, maybe Taimi doesn't even notice this, but we as the, um, the invisible viewers see <laughs> his kind of like his questioning, your storytelling. Um, he, you can see him kind of like shifting into this mode of like, this Taimi's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm irritable. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I assume we had this conversation as we were like leaving the cave. Tiny yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe they actually just like stand and, down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so we're climbing up, coming at the ladder. Yeah, um, I think finish it up while you're outside. And, and I, I, I as, as someone with the irritable tag, I know when someone's brooding. And so I uh, come up just behind uh, mm. Varpu again. And I say, thank you. I, I, I trust what I saw and I, and I trust you and I thank you for dealing with that foul creature's body and his cruel affects. Um, the, the five of us um, are planning to stay around to hear what, not SIEs, ASIEs? Aseri. Aseri, thank you. <laughs> to hear what Aseri has to say. Mm. Um, we will hear, we will listen to his story together. 
Um, I, I, uh, I look left and I look right. Is there anybody around? Uh, not if, if you don't, if you want to have like a private word, that's yeah, that's fine. You don't have to worry about that. Um, uh, 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 um, yeah, I, I lean in close. Um, and I, and I say, I will follow you. If your path leads to blood, to word keeper blood <laughs> on the end of my blade, I will follow you. And then I, I walk back to the group. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Wow. You don't even like check the reaction. You just say it and you go. Yeah. Nice. That's awesome. Great. <clears throat> um, we're nearing 11.30 oh yeah perfect so it'll start time right um, I, so the last thing that'll happen um, is a Sari shows up um, basically at dusk um, and he's alone you know that he left with three people in a sort of scouting expedition. And this is the guy that arrives back at camp. Um, you can tell from the, the scar on his face what almost happened to him. Oh. And uh, he looks... Um, you know, there's muttering amongst the gang as he, uh, uh, when they first see him, and they're, they're like, where, where, where are Naomi? Where's Hella? Mikey, where's Maiki? And um, he kind of like, um, he looks very downtrodden. Comes in, you know, and he's, um, he's the worst for wear. He looks exhausted. He's dirty, um, sweaty. And he just kind of like collapses by the fire. People bring him like food and water and it takes him um, a little while to um, recover. And then he, um, they tell him that you guys have arrived and he sort of, um, that, that kind of actually, you know, wakes him up a little bit. Like he becomes a little more alert and he sees you and um, he's introduced to you. And he seems very, like that's a lot for him to take in that you guys have returned. Um, uh, this is also a figure who you've heard about because he was somebody who stood up to the word keepers. So you guys knew about him. Um, he was the only one in that this whole sort of region that um, fought back against them. And um, you know that the, the people of his village paid the price. Um, so he's very, uh, you know, interested in the fact that you've returned, but he's got bigger things on his mind and you learn from him that um, the three people he left with, uh, one of them is dead, one of them was killed, and two of them have been captured in La Devisi. So Naimi is um, dead, and when that news comes, one of, the, one of Varpu's gang, um, a guy named Ralph, um, is stricken. I mean, everybody's very hurt by this, but this guy Ralph is like um, really badly struck. Um, and he says that before, so he explains, you know, the, the, like what happened and how they had sort of similar to your plan with Topias, they had sent somebody back into the village to gather information. Um, and somebody managed to actually eavesdrop on the word keepers, uh, conversation and the dramatic news that they learned was that, um, a hand, um, from or a uh, casisa, casisa, from the high church of the Corkine is being um, has been dispatched from the capital and is coming to Reuna. So a hand is one of the actual priests of the church, which is it's like the level above word giver. Whoa. Um, and but this the the kind of 
spy that they sent into the village was found out, and in the course of trying to escape, there was a fight uh, as as Aseri and the other two tried to help. Um, and in the course of that, Naomi was killed, and Hella and Mikey were both captured. So that's the that's the situation in the Northwest. Oh, da, 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 da. Yeah, and we will leave it there. And we'll wrap up. Anybody fulfill an alignment goal? Um, I would argue you're chaotic, right, Paiviki? Yeah. I feel like you've undermined a, like, oh. a system of order. Oh my god, totally. You disrupted the loyalty of a loyal gang? Yeah. Absolutely. Good call, John. Yeah, that's a that was a that was a winning maneuver. Um, nobody else. I think so. Okay. All right. Um, fulfilled traits. What do we got? Covetous, self selfish, and boastful. Did Paviki boast? I was trying uh, it, yeah. <laughs> um, I was trying to boast. I didn't say that many things, but um, maybe not. I was trying to think of. I mean, you let's you and me wrestle. I'll wrestle you for those books. Yeah. You didn't say like. You've never like met somebody you. like Paviki, right? Yeah. <laughs> you don't stand a chance. Yeah. You're being politic. Well, you did say you you did say you uh, trash talked. Oh. Yeah, I said I trash talked. I just didn't come up with a lot of. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. So let's uh, maybe we'll not. Yeah. Maybe maybe we got to hear you actually boast before you get the experience. All right. Well, she did say that it was a reward just to get to wrestle with her, right? Yeah, but that's actually friendly. <laughs> <laughs> it can still be a boast. It can still be a, I a boast. I think that I feel like boast. I think that counts as a boast. I think Donna's right. And I feel like the whole um, fight in front of a crowd feels like a. It's like a parade performance type yeah. of thing, which is a boasting type of. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> activity. I think, I think the first thing where you're like, it's you know. To, you know, you're going to get to wrestle me. Like, that's, that's, that's a big deal. <laughs> yeah, I got to work on my boasting. <laughs> <laughs> you could say that you were a little selfish with the honey made and also the, a little covetous of the books, right? Like, those were also potential. So, oh, yeah. So, I took away selfish, but, um, but yes, oh. covetous. Yeah. Wait, so there's, what are your traits now? Covetous? Covetous, boastful, and bold. 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 Well, that was really bold for sure. I'm going to yeah. wrestle the bandit chief. Absolutely. <laughs> um, all right. And then we got uh, curious. Oh, bam. That whole last bit you did was curious. Like, how did this all get? What, oh, yeah. What happened, right? Um, I need to know. I want to know what's up with the, the cave. Um, you didn't cheat. Have you ever cheated? I feel like I feel no. Like I and actually, I thought that this was my chance to cheat. Like that guy, point blank, basically gave me a chance to like denounce Paiviki and tell like bad information. But like, I don't think Taimi can do. I don't think she can cheat in that way. Like she's not going to lie. Like right. what Paiviki did was like strong and honorable. Yeah. Totally. Um. You definitely get curious. And then focused, respectful, and ruthless. I feel like Moiran was respectful in the conversation with um, the woman whose name I can't remember now. Mar Maruda? Marochi? 
Veruca. 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 Right. <laughs> um, yeah, great. Awesome. Um, fighter, Mark XP, if you solved a problem with physical prowess, uh, Paiviki certainly gets uh, okay. gets XP for that. Thief, Mark XP, if you solved a problem with stealth or tricky. Now remember, we're counting last week's session as well. Oh. So oh. I think because this is, these are kind of both combined into one session. We didn't oh, yeah. do last time. But I can't really recall. Oh, was that the session when we were in through the dust in the guy's face? Yeah. Or two times ago. That was two. That was before. That was two times ago. OK. <laughs> Did we sneak up on? No. We no, didn't you guys just you guys, you kind of pulled up and made camp. Yeah. So maybe there was no. Um... Oh, last session we only met them. Yep. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, it was brief. Um, OK. Uh, and then magic user, if you solve the problem with magic, you know, Paviki would be able to choose one or the other. No. Um, did you make an exciting discovery? And if so, what? Um, I mean, her learning about the hand, meeting this mm -hmm. guy, mm -hmm. meeting uh, Aseri, yep. that feels pretty. Yep, you're totally Momentous. right. Some dramatic stuff. Yeah, everybody gets XP for that. Did you overcome a difficult obstacle? Interesting. I feel like Paiviki overcame... I mean, yeah, yeah. You kind of created the obstacle, <laughs> right? But then you overcame it. Like, um, Right. And if the obstacle was... Varpu was between you and the loyalty of her gang or the kind of, um, yeah, then I wouldn't say that the gang is loyal to you now, but they are definitely, you have their ear, right? Like they definitely respect you. Um, so I think that counts. Everybody gets XP for that. And then did you acquire some memorable booty? Some books. I don't I know. Mean, I don't know what they are. They might just be phone books. I think, I think what's memorable about them is that you won them in a wrestling match. <laughs> Not a common occurrence. Okay. All right. And then if you were unhappy with any of your traits, you could swap them out at this point. Which you can think about. John, do you think that you might come up with a different one besides, uh, uh, what is it? I can't remember. Cheater? Cheater. Cheater. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I could, th I, I'll probably think of one, but I don't know, like, I, I can, um, yeah, I don't know, because I think Cheater might come into play if this power struggle between Varpu and Paiviki ends up coming to a head. Um, and of course, it goes without saying that, like, that is, like, I, I know Pai, uh, Taimi's, like, stirring the shit right now. <laughs> Um, but I'm absolutely loving it, right? Like, this is totally, yeah, it's yeah. totally within Paiviki's character to, like, you know, make friends and to, like, yeah, right. you know, make allies. Yeah. Um, and I love that Taimi's, like, Tavarpu, like, <laughs> yeah, I, I got you back. <laughs> yeah. I, I will follow you. Like, that's such a great, great dramatic tension there. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried about dividing this crew this crew also could be so new that you know it's a little more amorphous uh -huh. um but i i also am i also just like want the chips to fall where they may in regards to that like i think it's just going to be fun <laughs> yeah whatever let's see what happens um Awesome. And now, so just if we can formulate it real quick, I assume next your next plan would be, we don't know the details, but perhaps Topias will be sent ahead. But in any case, you're going to make a kind of covert visit to Rayuna, right? To see what's going on there. Is that right? Or do you think the situation with Asari has changed the immediate plans? Um, n no, I, I, I would imagine that would still stand. I would be scared to send Topias after hearing about those two getting caught. Okay. Um, and the that, hand coming. And the hand coming. I would just, yeah. But I do, I would want to try. 
I mean, that's the thing. I would want to try to learn some more about what's happening in town, if possible. Yeah, somehow. Yeah, I agree. Okay. No. But in any case, the focus is going to be on Rayuna and La Devesi, right? Like, those seem to be the next two areas of interest. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Okay. Are you guys cool with that? I am, but I don't want to steer the... I mean, ship if you don't want to do that. Yeah, obviously, like, Taimi's interests lie a little more in Rayuna, but, like, she can be, con she can be convinced. Um, but, yeah, dealing with the Colkeen in some form, you know, that, that's, that's what she's interested in. Yeah. And we're, in, we're we are down with that, Donna. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it, either way... Um... Whichever town they need us to fight in first. <laughs> yeah. Great. So then I know how to um, plan for next time, which is awesome. Um, okay, cool. Thanks, guys. Thank you all. Thank you, Jason. So nice. Thanks, Jason. Nice to play with you again. Donna, I see that dusk is finally approaching in, in, <laughs> in the land of milk there and is. <laughs> Um. So I have us not meeting next week. Yeah, because I got my workshop I'm teaching. So that's right. That's right. That's right. Um, um, and then the week after that, I will be in Vermont. What? Uh, my sister's my sister's getting married on September. In well, I'm not going to say the date. Uh, <laughs> she's getting married in early September, and so uh, I'm coming up to quarantine for two weeks. Oh my god! Well, um, so that's the first day that I get there. So I'll be um, in my parents' guest room. <laughs> um, so it will be actually 9 p.m. Wow. Not yeah, are, you gonna, are you going to plan on trying to play that week? Yeah. Oh, cool. Great. Okay, awesome. Is everybody else good with that schedule? Like two <laughs> weeks from today, basically? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Two weeks from today. Great. But you two can't meet up. Or I guess you can play at some. I don't know how that works. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I thought about it. Like, I might try to make a jaunt down to White River and do, like, a hangout in a park and just wave at me. I don't know. <laughs> right, right, right. I know it's hard to like, how do you reunite with a bunch of people? Yeah. I mean, one thing if, I mean, pick or choose a couple of folks that you'd like to lay eyes on. And Yeah. I mean, at the very least I have to go down there. I can't go to Vermont and not see my in-laws. Um, yeah, yeah, right. Oh, right. So right, right. Of course. Well, so let me know. And if you're, I mean, I would love to, you know, yeah. see you in person. That'd be really great. It would warm my heart. Yeah. <laughs> just wear a face shield. Yeah, yeah, totally. It'll protect your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Thanks, you all. Thank uh, you, Jason. Nice super to see you. That wrestling match was awesome. Great drama. <laughs> yeah, that um, was amazing. <laughs> um, see you next time. Right. All right. Good night. Thank you all.